All right, so this is kind of the big video that I've been wanting to put together. Um, so as the title says, I have actually been participating in the Noble Audio uh, custom in-ear monitor uh, demo. And so what that entails is that um, basically people in the Seattle area got a chance to listen to Noble Audio's entire lineup of custom in-ear monitors as well as their universal in-ear monitors. And so we've been getting the ability to compare that to one another within the line of Noble Audio and we have the opportunity to listen to it with the of course Cord Hugo like I showed in previous videos. So I want to give a big 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 thank you to Brennan of Noble Audio as well as Noble Audio themselves for allowing me to participate in this event. And without further ado, I guess we should begin. And before I begin, I want to mention that uh, in the recent Head 5 meet, uh, we had the opportunity to listen to the Ultimate Ears line as well, um, because they were a part of the meet. And so I had the chance to listen to the Ultimate Ears reference monitor, and I was so amazed by it that I wanted to kind of try other custom in-ear monitors from other companies. And Noble Audio is one of the companies that I was interested in. So with me, I have two of Noble Audio's custom in-ear monitors. So right here we have the Kaiser 10, which is a 10 driver custom in-ear monitor. Um, as you can see, the design of the custom in-ear monitors are actually pretty stunning themselves. You've got kind of like gold flakes inside and it's actually trans semi-transparent so you can see the drivers in there. And if you guys don't know what custom inner monitors are, basically it's a an earphone that is molded to a specific person's ear. And so basically only that person has the right fit and therefore the right sound. But these uh, custom inner monitor tour demos are kind of shape so that it fits in many people's ears and you can actually put a uh, universal ear tip on here. Now you won't get quite as good of a sound as you would as if you had the actual custom version, but if you get a good seal then you should be able to get a decent impression of how the sound is. So this is the Kaiser 10 and the other custom inner monitor that I was interested in is the Noble 8C. So the Noble 8C is also a very unique kind of design of the custom inner monitor. Uh, to me, the two kind of complement each other. So if I had to choose between one of the two, it'd be a hard decision for me. One of my good friends and also a, a fellow U Head Fi YouTuber, his name is Bowie. I'll put a link in his in the description below for his channel. Uh, he recommended me to try the 8C first because they had more of a, a fun kind of sound signature. And I would have to agree with that. So comparing the 8C and the K10, uh, the, the 8C kind of has more of a treble emphasis and upper mid-range emphasis. So if you're listening to female vocals um, or guitars or Kind of percussion instruments then the, the 8c might be a better choice for you in that regard because uh, it has better sound stage abilities you can really get the the sense of space when you're listening to a recording and i think the, the 8c does a good job at that on the other hand if you listen to male vocals or just kind of want to relax and get into the music i think the the kaiser 10 is a good choice for that um, the Kaiser 10 has more of a kind of warm sound signature, so it has a little bit more of a lower bass and upper bass punch than the uh, 8C. So it brings the, the lower mid-range a little more warm, and I really enjoyed it for male vocals and just kind of singing to my music, whereas the, the 8C was more kind of an analytical uh, sound signature for me. 
In terms of the sound stage, the uh, Kaiser 10 is somewhat airy. Um, it doesn't give me the sense of a large sound stage as the, the 8C does. Uh, but the instrument separation and the ability to isolate one instrument from another uh, within the sound stage is much better on the K10. So, uh, with the custom line kind of taken care of, if I had to choose between one of them, I would choose the, the Kaiser 10 over the 8C just because uh, the Kaiser 10 is a little more laid back and kind of more musical in my opinion. And that's the garbage truck outside. But anyway, uh, moving on with the rest of the Noble line. Noble also has two uh, universal earphones that have switches on them. So I have them right here in these baggies. So I'll take one of them out. They pretty much look the same. So it's very easy to get them mixed up. So I'll just keep one of them open. So these switches, these earphones with switches actually do have a switch on them. And it's kind of a, it activates another set of drivers. So you're getting kind of two in your earphones with this kind of uh, earphone. It's not a custom one, so this is universal and its shape is pretty standard for all of them. And you just put the uh, universal ear tip on here. But once you get this in your ear, you can see there's a switch. And so it's kind of like an EQ. You can turn it on or off, just like that. And you get kind of a different sound. Uh, so this one is the Noble FR. And the one over here with the, uh, the gold screws, I'm not sure if you can see that. This one is the PR. Um, Personally, I wasn't a big fan of these. Uh, they sounded more like a good proof of concept rather than an actual earphone that I would probably buy and listen to. Um, between the two, I think the, the PR has kind of a tweeter activator. So when it's in the up position, the tweeter is on. When it's in the down position, the tweeter's off. Uh, Personally, I didn't like it too much because the, the bass was kind of lacking in either mode and it kind of gave more of a cold sound signature from that. Uh, with the, the FR, I liked it a little bit when it was in the up mode. So when you have the earphone in your ear, it's like this and the switch is in the up direction. Uh, when you have it in the down position, I think the, the bass was a little bit uh, it seemed like there was a subwoofer that turned on or off, so either the bass was on or off, and it was just kind of weird with it off, and it made it sound kind of canny in that regard. So in my personal opinion, I'm not a big fan of these switch earphones, but it is a cool idea to have. I think Noble Audio can improve uh, the performance of the sound in future revisions. All right, and last but not least, um, Noble gave us the whole lineup of universal linear monitors. So from left to right, I have the Noble 3, the Noble 4, the Noble 5, and the Noble 6. And they all kind of look similar, just like the switching ones. So I'm only going to open one. Between those four, my favorite one would be the Noble 4, which I'm taking out right now. So kind of looks like the switching one, so there's no big real difference in terms of appearance. But in terms of sound, I found the Noble 4 to sound the most balanced to me in terms of the frequency spectrum. Um, it had sub-bass roll off, but the bass presence was more uh, balanced with the mid-range and the treble compared to uh, the other universal line. And so I really like that from the Noble 4. Um, the big difference between the Noble 4 and the others to me was just kind of how the balance was because the Noble 3 is more of a V-shape kind of earphone, so I'm not a huge fan of the V-shape. 
the the Noble Five was a little warmer to me. Um, the the sub bass was kind of brought out, but a bit too much for me, and it kind of ruined the mid range at least for me. And the the Noble Six was a kind of like the Noble Five, but a little bit more uh, refined and not as obtrusive with the bass into the mid range. But I still found it to be pretty uh, kind of U shaped compared to the Noble Four. So to me, the Noble Four is balanced throughout the whole spectrum. Uh, there is a slight treble emphasis uh, where the cymbal hits are, but that kind of gave this sparkle without ruining the, the rest of this uh, kind of the sound signature. So detail retrieval wasn't the best I've heard, but for the price range, uh, I believe these are 450. Uh, then these are actually pretty good from what I've listened to with uh, in your earphones and custom in your earphones, I guess. So wrapping this up, this is a pretty long video. Um, I again want to thank Noble Audio for allowing me to kind of try these because this is all very new to me. I'm still fairly new to in-ear monitors and multi-driver earphones so it was kind of a, a pleasant experience for me to be able to try these out um, for extended amount of time and I especially want to thank them for allowing me to try their custom in-ear monitors because these are very expensive <laughs> earphones they're over a thousand dollars so I was very gracious for allowing to get a chance to listen to them I guess I'm kind of stuttering and speechless <laughs> uh, but yeah of the of the three here that I have the Kaiser 10 the 8c and the Noble 4 um, each one has their own kind of strong points and if I were to spend the money and buy one I would actually get the the Noble 4 just because I like the balance I like the, the Kaiser 10 because of the the warm sound signature and the great instrument separation and I like the, the 8C because of the kind of uh, treble presence and the, the sense of sound stage. Um, I don't honestly get the, the Noble 4 just because I don't think I'm completely dedicated to get a custom inner monitor yet. But if I did, uh, I guess the Kaiser 10 would be the one of my choice. So if you have any questions about how these sound or about the Chord Hugo which I have as part of the, the tour, uh, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again.